We do Jaws too. This is the Leeds United Chelsea match review. We'll be talking magic moments, uh, man of the match, loads of stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, you're a Leeds fan, why not subscribe and hang around? Leave a comment. Why don't you give a thumbs up? What else do people do? Talk about us. Yeah, go and tell your friends. Share it. Click on the share button. Share it on uh, Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter. And w where else? TikTok. There you go. Shout in the street really loud to everybody. Yeah. You could tattoo the Roaring Peacock across your chest. That would really help the uh, channel out. I caught my neighbour doing some gardening this morning and mentioned it to him and he's now on it. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Hey. Simple as that. You see somebody trimming the hedge? Small steps. That's an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> the following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back to the Roaring Peacock Podcast. This is the match review of Leeds United, greatest team in the world. Nil. Chelsea, um, horrible bastards. Nil. So there we go. We've drawn, and I don't know how to feel about it. Um, my name is Adonis, and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter. It's a very good hello from me. Joining us to discuss the game is at Barney underscore 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 21. Now then, mate, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Barney. We don't we don't have time to uh, have uh, chit chat, um, and <laughs> we're also joined by Machiavelli at Ewan Metcalf. Ewan, how are you going? I'm very well, sir. Much better after that. Right then, Leeds nil, Chelsea nil. First thoughts. Um, I was really impressed with that. It was grand, wasn't it? We we uh, we looked organised at the back. We uh, won our drills in midfield. Um, I thought. Bamford before he came before he came off, he was working the lines really well. I was really really impressed considering that we'd already lost before we started the game. So yeah, good. You and similar, uh, better organised, left far less spaces in the midfield for them to exploit. You know, to go running through, which we seemed to do the other day. Um, first half we seemed to struggle a bit. Just confidence, just sort of on the ball, first touch, not brave enough. Um, but then seemed to settle down and, and frustrated them. I thought we were yeah really well organised. Back four was great, uh, including Phillips as, as well in that sort of back five. Um, really delighted with the point, to be honest. Just to grind out a result and clean sheet against them. You know, you look at the, how much money they've spent and the quality of the team and, and the bench even. Um, great point and needed at this time. I think we needed that today. So uh, really pleased and uh, proud of the team, proud of the lads. Yeah, you could buy a, a small oil field with the money that they've spent for for, for each of those players. Um, well, look at the, I mean, look at the bench. I mean, the bench: Werner, Giroud, Alonso, Zuma, Kovacic, James, Hudson, Adoy. I mean, come on. You know, we're doing great to compete with that. I'm glad Giroud didn't come on. I've got to say, <laughs> just uh, he's one of them. Any that I just think they got a cross into him. Yeah, but uh, I mean, their bench is worth an absolute fortune. It's probably worth nearly as much as our team. So, God bless. Our bench was looking quite good though. Um, a little bit of cock action on the bench and Berardi as well, turning the yes. heat up. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. Today was the first time we've had all our uh, signings in the squad as well, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Which is quite ridiculous, really, considering we're in the the later stage of the season, really. It is ridiculous. I, I did hear that just before the game, and then Phillips almost immediately got injured, and I thought, here we go. This is the price. <laughs> this is the price we're paying for having some fit players. That pitch is a death death trap in it, though. To it be didn't fair. look too yeah. bad, though. Played all right today, but I think, you, yeah, it, it's a death trap. Mm. I thought the way Bamford injured himself was a sort of innocuous coming down on the pitch from sort of like a height. Uh, yeah, there was a couple today where you thought, that's not an injury from a contact. That's pure the pitch, really. So, mm. um, yeah, God, need to get that sorted out. <laughs> Yeah, we've got so, 10 games to go then. Um, that means that there's five home games left. 
Mm. Um, the five home games would be um, Paul Heckingbottom, Sheffield United. Which... <laughs> 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 Fucking hell. <laughs> You That's a good Alice. Get it, don't I thought I could have a giggle at Sheffield Wednesday last week, but now I can have a giggle at the other side of Sheffield as well. Uh, <laughs> um, Jurgen uh, Klopp's Liverpool. Oof. Uh, Three points. Easy. Rio Ferdinand's scum. <laughs> uh, no comment. Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. And uh, Sam Allardyce's Brexit football. Not bad. 15 points. Brilliant. Yeah, there you go. 15 points. Okay. Um, so like first half then, I thought this is this could be one of the games of the season. Um, mm. we hit the crossbar at both ends. Mm. <laughs> um Roberts had a, a goal disallowed, probably was offside this time. Fair enough. Um, we looked a threat down both wings. Um, I noticed that Lorente man marked. At a corner, he followed his man the whole way. He's learning, isn't he? Yeah, it was it was really good. We've knocked, it was all, impressive. Them, knocked all them bad habits he learned at Real Sociedad and Spain out of him. Right, yeah. Well, they've never seen a corner taken <laughs> <laughs> cross directly into the box, have they? In Spain, no, no um, four, fourteen passes and then a yeah, yeah, sort of yeah, exactly, it's sort of. The, pass it back to the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper does keepy uppies for two minutes, and then yeah. Was it me though when Chelsea was taking the corners? They don't. They weren't very dangerous with their corners, to be honest. They, they seemed to be kicking it right to the back post, and it wasn't really going anywhere. It didn't seem to me like we'd even touch the ball from a corner at either end until Rodrigo headed it straight at uh, Mendy. Mm. I could be wrong. But I just felt like we hadn't even won a won a ball in the air <laughs> in either box. <laughs> no. It didn't really matter because as you say, it wasn't really threatening from yes. either set, thing. set pieces on both sides worked great today, the quality was it. Again, I don't know whether that's a pitch, you know, when you've got a bit of grass to sort of shape a ball and sort of get your foot underneath it and stuff. I don't know whether it's just because people are skidding things. I don't know. I'm blaming the pitch for everything now. I, I should shut yeah. up about it, really. I was gonna say because you can't blame the <laughs> pitch. Footballers the ball- for God's sake. When the ball's in the air, you can't blame the pitch, surely. <laughs> no, yeah, but nobody dares jump for it because when you land, it's like anything can happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Jump, um, for a co- jump for a corner, come down, end up making a Laurel and Hardy movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to get a little bugbear off my chest. Um, oh, go on. This linesman is an absolute fucking cunt. <laughs> I hate him so much. Don't sit on the fence, mate. Come on. <laughs> Um, so there was really obvious offsides, offside decisions in the first half against Chelsea. Yeah. And he, he wouldn't put his flag up for love yeah. no money. Yeah. Um, it could be the most obvious thing. There was one that was so obvious. Yeah, yeah. He was so fucking offside. Just put your flag up yeah. and save us all a lot of time. And then for Leeds, there was one where Roberts was clean through and he wasn't even offside. He wasn't. When they showed really it. Really tight, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And he fucking oh. flag up straight away, the cunt. I know. Well, he let it play on so that you can obviously get to the end of that move and see, well, was it or wasn't it? And then the Roberts one, he was like straight away, which was, honestly, it was a hundred times tighter than the Chelsea one, wasn't it? Mm. The he Chelsea was actually one was so blatant. <laughs> that's, how, seems... that's how many times tighter it was. <laughs> was it really? Was it on? Yeah, it was on side. Oh, yeah. fuck off. Don't it seems know. to be the common thing in this season, though, that the Lions have asked to wait until a couple of passes after the, the, the offside is, and then he puts his flag up. I don't understand it. If it's a clear offside, put your flag up straight away. Yeah. yeah. I think they've been given a directive, haven't they, to let the game go to like, the next phase of play, or you know, the ball goes out, or you know, the keeper collects it, so the game's sort of stopped. And then put your flag up so that if, say, the ball went in the back of the net, you can review it as, as was it offside or not. But the point is, it was that blatant. They don't make a decision mm. anymore themselves on the pitch, which is leading to loads of problems, I believe. Exactly, yeah. And then you, you get the Roberts one, which technically that was the time to do it because it was so tight. You let the game, if you stick it in the back of the net, go back and have a look. He fucking puts his flag up and you don't even get a chance to look at it. I mean, it's like, what the... Mm. F- yeah, I know what you're saying. I wasn't even annoyed about it until he just mentioned it. I'd forgotten about it. <laughs> oh, I my so, God. 
No, pleased about getting a point. I'd forgotten about that. Now you've wound me up about it. I'm gonna go kick. I've got a dog. <laughs> I was yelling at the, I was yelling at the telly like an old man yells, <laughs> yells at birds or whatever. I was so fucking pissed off. Oh no. god. Okay. So now, just speaking off air, um, Barney has a different opinion to my opinion on Roberts. So let's get this out of the way then, Barney. How did you think Roberts went today? I thought he played brilliantly today, to be honest. <laughs> I did. Yeah. The thing is that someone, someone's said on Twitter, and it's probably true, I mean, during the course of the game, he'll do something fantastic. Next mm. phase of play, he'll probably miss the ball or won't pass or fall over. And that's the type of player he is at the moment. He's still young, but I thought he, was, he answered a lot of questions today when we've been questioning about his... I don't know the way he plays with the ball sometimes in his decision making, but I thought he worked his socks off today. Ewan, thoughts on Tyler? Do I get the adjudicating decision? I guess yours is not as positive, Donny. Do you know? I'll read. I'll read between the lines on that one. Um, do you know what I, I? I've got to say, better than it sounds really patronising, but for Roberts, I thought he was really good. Um, which. Is, Previous weeks, I can't get I can't get behind him at all, and I've said he shouldn't start games really again because I just think he's had chances to come on and impress and make that berth his own, and he's just not done it for me. But I thought he was a lot better today. I thought he showed some quality. You know, the shot that hit the crossbar, I thought was you know really clever and you know cheeky and kind of what you want to see for him. There was odd times when he got on the ball where he looked great, but. Yeah, like Barney says, there's on other times where you just think, oh, come on, there's an easy pass on there. He should. There was one in the first half where he should have squared it across the box. Or in the second half, where he got into space on the left-hand side, and there was somebody waiting. I think there was two players on the edge of the box waiting, and he tried a really weak shot at the goalie. And Yeah, there's just times where he just flatters to deceive, I think. So not <laughs> nonplussed either way, really. Much better for him, which sounds, again, patronising, but the truth. There's a There's a children's rhyme. Is it something about a bonnet or something? <laughs> What's the name? Um, oh, little Miss Muffet sat on the top. Look, that? yeah, is when she was when she was good, <laughs> she was very random. very good, oh, yeah. and when she was bad, she was horrid. Yes, <laughs> something like that, isn't it? Yeah. And that's what Roberts reminds me of. Except that when Roberts is good, he's okay, and when he's bad, he's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> it's, so, it's so unbelievably annoying. Like. You know, the team works so hard, especially against a team like Chelsea, to get the ball back, get the ball upfield quickly. And then he he's through, through, clear through, and then he just fucking can't even control the football. And that's his job. And so I do feel for him because I think it's a bit like you're an actor, right? You're starting out of your, start, start of your career, and you've been suddenly put in a fucking Hollywood blockbuster after Hollywood blockbuster. And there's so much pressure to, to what, he, what he needs to do is he needs to go do some fucking theatre plays, you know, in yeah, that's the West End. Norwich or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Get to the Alhambra in Bradford, Tyler. <laughs> exactly. Build his confidence up, you know, learn his craft and then... And then, I, then I think he's got a lot of potential because wh- when he is good, he he's okay, you know, at, at Premier League level. And that was a great shot in the first half. And what what a save from Mendy to tip it onto the the crossbar. But the trouble is, those fantastic moments for me are just too far and few between. And and his mistakes can be so costly at this level. Yeah, just. The thing is, though, my my point of view is that everyone's saying that he wouldn't be playing if Rodrigo was fit. Rodrigo came on today and then he went back off again. He didn't exactly play to the level that we were expecting when he came on either. And Tyler did move up into uh, the Bamford position and Rodrigo dropped back. And Rodrigo wasn't making those runs like Tyler was today either. So... I think he's there on merit as well, not just because he's uh, Rodrigo's injured or not playing. Well, that's all we've got. I'm going to say I'll give you an alternative view on that. That clinching him and play, Rodrigo playing that poorly. That Tyler's been is like is the only thing we've got left. But um, we're going to we're going to put Max Dean. We're going to put Max Dean on. 
don't know what's Seven, happened to Seventeen year old. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about that for sure? Or Greenwood or uh, who? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> who it, else what's... are we? Bamford's injured now, right? Mm. Rodrigo's getting back from injuries, nowhere near full fitness. Um, Roberts is so inconsistent. I saw an interesting take on um because what did you think to Rodrigo being put on and then taken off again? Which is never a good thing, is it? It's never positive, is it? Though, is it? Well his expression when he came off, he was like, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it was like confusing like everyone else. I had well, an interest interesting take on it though, that apparently it might have been because they've assessed Bamford's injury, he's gonna be out. And they want to take him off and protect him to have a goal scorer or a number nine playing, but that sounds too contrived to me. But no, no, I don't think. I don't think. I didn't, that's the I didn't case. think he played that badly. <laughs> so, no, he wasn't running enough. That was the yeah. that was the issue. That yeah, was, was, why, was Klitsch, been, why was Klitsch left on? Then? <laughs> Klitsch was um, running, but going backwards. He was like doing the moonwalk at times. <laughs> Johnny Cooper. Uh, who works for Opta has actually commented on this and Marcelo Bielsa has substituted players on and off more times than any other Leeds United manager <laughs> since substitutes were introduced in 1965. Yeah. Wow. That's, That's a start and a half, isn't it? Yeah, there you go. That is a start. Wow. Doesn't <sighs> surprise me, actually, I don't think. I don't think many people do that, do they? Apart from that guy who played for Southampton who was supposed to be George Weir's cousin. It wasn't that at Leeds? That was at Ellen Road, wasn't it? I think it was at that game. Yeah. And they brought him on under the, his agent and said he's George Weir's cousin. He's brilliant. Graeme Souness bought it, brought him on at Leeds and within about three minutes he was back off again. He was just, <laughs> just some lad they'd picked up in an airport in Mozambique or something. I don't know. What a blag though. Brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> I mean... That's a ne- that's another level from getting into the majestic or whatever. Uh, yeah, when you were seventeen with a tie on. Yeah, with a tie, yeah. <laughs> tie and jeans. Blagged in with a tie on. Ben Sherman shirt on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so half time then, we had forty percent possession. I'm wondering if that's the least amount of possession we've had in a half against another team. In the end. We ended up with 38% possession, and I'm sure that that is the least amount that we've had. And it might even be the least amount that we've had under Bielsa. Wow. Oh. You know my view on stats. Right. Leave it to <laughs> someone I'll else. Bar- I'll let Barney comment on that, because I don't. I just think they're all... What was the score? Nil-nil. <laughs> Fine. Mel- Melier Barney. made eight saves. And both sides had 21 shots on target as well, didn't they? I think it was. was it? Yeah. Or something like that. 21 20... shots on goal. Yeah. But like you said, I suppose that stat, sort of stat's ridiculous because it's, yeah, there is on goal, but it didn't go in. Yeah. At the end of the day, you look at the final score to see what the main stat is, don't you? Are you exaggerating there, Barney? <laughs> I must say, I'm sure I heard that. I heard, I heard some of that. I heard something about 21, but was it not 21 between them? <laughs> it might be between them. I'm not good with maths. <laughs> you can see me and Barney have a really low opinion of stats. because <laughs> I, don't, I don't care, Barney just gets them completely wrong. And don't care. <laughs> <laughs> He's not asked. No, I just use stats that will um, to my advantage, and I, I don't care if it's right or wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Chelsea had 15 shots, Leeds had seven. Chelsea had eight shots on target and Leeds had four. Right. Yeah. I do think that they they high pressed us really well. That yeah. caused us trouble. And yeah. they also played balls through the lines. They did that really well. So their movement off the ball and and um their ability to pick out passes. You know, they were doing like Pablo Hernandez style through balls over and over again. Um, getting in behind us. So I think we've done we've done so well to recover. Um, I think where our pressing intensity didn't drop too much. Just that, like in the last twenty minutes, I think we looked a bit leggy, but that's understandable because that, especially that first half was so intense from both teams. Yeah, but they're one of the best teams in the world, I suppose. Yeah. I thought they pressed really well and they were better on the ball than us. And I just thought Jorginho and Kante, I mean, 
I'd love Kante at Leeds. I think he's brilliant. You know, he's busy, strong. Don't you know? Don't gives nothing away, but he's good on the balls. Was quite clever. Um, I thought he was the difference in the midfield. But you know, Phillips was tremendous for us to sort of counteract that as well. And I just thought we didn't leave as many gaps when they brought up the play. There's times in the last few games where they've just run straight through the midfield. Whereas I thought today there was there were apart from that little blip right at the start of the second half, we were sort of closing spaces better and sort of working more as a unit. Um, which seems to have gone in the last few games. But I agree with you. I thought their pressing the ball was really good and they kept it up for longer than I thought they would as well, um, going well into the second half. But then I thought they ran out of ideas a bit as well, which is why they must have asked Rudiger to start stepping up and him carrying the ball forward to sort of take the pressure off the midfielders who looked like they'd run out of steam or run out of ideas more than anything. Mm. Um, but I thought we were, you know well worth a point you know I mean you look at uh, Rafina's chance that he miss hit that Mendy actually made a good save to get because he was in, anticipating a better shot and uh, the deflected one from James that went could have gone anywhere um, could quite easily nick that I think from my point of view I think um, I can never pronounce his name right Tuchel is that how you pronounce the Chelsea's Coach? Seashell Seashell yeah. Thomas Tuchel. Seashell yeah. yeah I'll say that I think the way he sets up his team, it's very organised, it's very rudimentary with the positions. And I think to a certain extent, it played into our man marking system. Um, I thought in midfield were fantastic. The way Dallas and um, Phillips, they sat in, in, in the, during the game as well, they were interchanging, dropping back and forth. And Phillips was going in advanced roles as well. I thought he was fan, fantastic today. And I, I mean, Stroke as well, he just gets better and better every time I see him. He was absolutely fantastic, and there were some times when he was winning the ball with his play, with his man marking, and no one was picking up that loose ball. Ball, he was getting really frustrated by, it. and I like that. I like to see that in a young player when he's like barking orders out to the, the some of the main players in the squad. No, agreed. I thought, yeah. I mean, you know my view on him anyway. I've said before. I think he's going to be one of them players that'll just get better and better and. It'll be hard for some of them big stars that have been bought or come in to get the place because I think he's he's really sort of solid, isn't he? Without being dramatic or without mm. being sort of standout, he's just really solid and, and clever on the ball and, and uh, quite graceful. But I, I agree, he was getting frustrated at winning balls and nobody was picking it up. I thought there was that was a frustration, I think, for him, but also for me watching it. It was like, why is there nobody picking up that second mm. ball at the times? Um, but the back three, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not a massive fan of Alioski at left back, but I thought he did well today after the first 10 minutes where I thought he was going to have trouble against um, Pulisic. But uh, the back three, I mean, Ailing, um, Struck and um, uh, Lorente, I thought were tremendous today. Really, really good. Lorente is looking every bit the footballer that we, we thought we were getting, didn't we? Yeah, he really stepped up today. He was so impressive, Quality. especially driving driving the ball and just looking really comfortable, um, especially against higher quality opposition where a few of them started to look a little bit mismatched at times. Um, but yeah, Ailing Strauch was fantastic as well. I, I was a little bit scared Alioski was going to lose his head and get another yellow and get sent off at, at one point. Um, and... <laughs> He's another one. He's in the Roberts bracket where he just he's when he's good, he's okay. He does well. Like he's a, a decent Premier League player when he's good. But when he when he's bad, it's so bad. It's just so unbelievably frustrating. Um, like just giving the ball away or mistiming a tackle. Um, you know, there was that tackle that he got the yellow card for. He didn't even like hurt the guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he's gonna get booked. Kick his head off. <laughs> Kick him right up his trumper, man. Fucking give him it. <laughs> like it's Leeds Chelsea. You know, you want a bit no, of that. No, you no. want a bit of that. But um, yeah, if you don't get the ball, fucking take the man out. Go and make him hurt. The thing with Alioski, though, if I was a referee, he's like one of those little yappy dogs, just never stops all the time. And I bet yeah. he's just at pe people's feet all the time. And he's just like, just fuck off, will you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a wasp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would. And it was weird from 
I actually thought Kevin Friend had a good game, and he was yeah. he was quite yeah, jovial right. most of the time. Mm. Like, I don't know. You, you could argue Roberts was fouled a couple of times, yeah. and and he kind of missed it, and maybe he gave them a few free kicks when they didn't really deserve it. But overall, I, I thought he had a decent game for a referee, and he was kind of he was laughing as well, which which I don't mind. I don't, yeah. I don't as long as you're not giving fucking stupid decisions you can enjoy yourself and as long as you're not making it all about you and i'd much rather him a referee you know play on and 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 just look keep the game going rather than blowing his whistle for everything um i just think that they were just a little bit better at flailing to the to the floor and 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 asking for those those free kicks yeah, I don't think we're insistent enough. How it's like that was it the Chilwell shot that never got a touch on him, and he gave a corner, and he kind of shouted for it, and none of us, none of our players said anything. It wasn't a corner, never touched anybody. No, and yeah. you kind of think if we'd have carried on, may, I don't know, maybe they wouldn't, but they would have looked at it on VAR and gone, "It's not even a corner." You know, if they'd have scored from that corner, yeah. they wouldn't, wouldn't have reviewed it because nobody went, "It's not a corner." They just sort of accepted it, which I thought friend did well. I think there's times where the better teams, the big, the bigger teams, if you want to call it, like teams in the top six, not bigger teams because we're bigger than everybody, but they get decisions we'd never get. You know, somebody falls on the floor from a bit of pressure from a centre half free kick. I thought the you know when Ailing got injured and he um, there was a t- I think it was Dallas on somebody in the midfield. I don't think that was a foul in a million years, and then Ailing picked it up and kind of you yeah. know. Went through. It had been cleaning and goal. There was a couple of them where he thought it's never a foul, and then, like you say, Costa twice got, you know, sort of pressure on him from behind, pushed from behind, nothing play on, and then literally a second later, somebody gets pushed from behind on the Chelsea team, and it's a free kick. So I thought yeah, it was a bit yeah. of inconsistency, but that's they just much, they just they just yelp in uh, louder Spanish or or whatever it is, you know, yeah, yeah, moaning in French or or whatever. It just sounds so much better to a referee. Yeah. Especially like West, if you're wearing a blue shirt. Yeah, West Ham the other day, that four L's, that, that tackle from Phillips wasn't even a foul. Mm. And because he helped like a little babby, threw himself on the floor, you know, Phillips gets a yellow. So they're just reacting to like the, the players, yeah. and probably because you can hear the players more because there's no crowd. Yeah, There's a lot more of that going on. Um, Rafinha got taken out, and I thought he had one foot in the area. And I thought that if, if that had been scum, they'd, they'd have... They'd have had nine players surrounding the referee asking for a penalty. Why aren't you going to VAR? Have a look at it yourself. Don't listen to those cunts in Stockley Park. That's a fucking <laughs> West Gum. We need a penalty. You know, go over to the monitor and give us a fucking penalty now, you bastard. Yeah. That's what Scum are like. And um, I think we could have a little bit more of that, to be honest. A um, little bit more of the dark arts. I'd like to see. I know Bielsa is like, you know, pure and everything but we are leads like I think we might have forgotten that a little bit over the last three years I think it's also the fact that we're, we're, we're not we're too honest sometimes which is no bad thing but I think it's also about knowing how to play the game in the Premier League it's obviously it's about great football but it's also about playing getting the ref on your side when you, there's a little thing not going your way you have a little quiet ear and he's Little, uh, is it quite not little quiet here? Yeah? Little quiet here. Yeah? Who's got a little quiet here? Yeah? <laughs> quiet little ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, like, you, you see some of the big teams, like they're always like talking to the ref out when there's a corner coming up or things like that. And it's just about a little bit, a bit more maturity. And I think that I think we saw that today in the game as well. We were just a little bit uh, when we're going forward, fantastic, but. We were a little bit reserved as well, where we didn't want to risk it too much. Yeah. In too much little at the back. Yeah, I like this. I like it when it goes to Melier and he doesn't pick it up straight away and he mm. waits for them to come. And he's like, oh, I'm going to pick it up. No, I'm not. No, wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, no, I'm going to pick it up. I like that. <laughs> yeah. A bit of, I, a bit of, I, after the I'm Arsenal like, game, I don't like it. I'm like, just pick the fucking thing up because you <laughs> fall over it and end up fucking giving a penalty away or <laughs> no, I think you can't have it both you can't have it both ways with BLC he's an absolute purist and he don't want any of that in the game and you mm. can't pick you can't pick and choose unfortunately I'm, I'm like you I played for many years at you know decent level and I was one of sort of filthiest but in, in a really cute way on the pitch most of the time just things he used to do and uh, as I got older definitely got worse but and you watch you look sometimes look at players who are like that and think oh I love a bit of that you know where they're just using every bit of ounce of experience and kind of like the dark arts you want to call it mm-hmm. to just get a result I love all that but you just can't have it both ways with Bielsa Candy he's not interested I mean I, 
that I think you, you need a player like that. So I always remember thinking that the two players I've seen in my lifetime who used to ref a game almost was Strachan and Dalglish. Mm. But never got nasty with the ref, never seemed to, um, but just put influence and pressure on him all the time and sort of chatted away. I mean, Strachan never sort of hardly ever questions a ref's decision, but in a certain way, he could ref games almost and get the ref on his side and get the ref on Leeds' his side, more importantly. Dalglish was a master at it for Liverpool, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I hate to say it, but Roy Keane as well. He used yeah. to do very, very similar thing for Scum and... and um, and uh, Patrick Vieira, Martin Kia, and those kind of people, they were always in in their ear. Okay, uh, man of the match then, Barney. Roberts, sorry, but I thought I would play brilliant. Oh, get out, Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, for me, I, I can see a really good player in him. And it's when he does the little frustrating things, it really looks like, for fuck's sake. But I just, I thought he played really well today. I thought he answered a few questions that people were asking. Okay, Barney's with the sympathy vote there. Are you in? <laughs> Barney's, Barney's basically just done the most improved player. Yeah, got, most improved player award. That's it. You know, the you participation tw- award. When you're 11 and you're not very good <laughs> and the manager gives you an award for like, oh, you, you were the best at bringing the oranges on or... You were the most improved, which basically means you're still shit, but you weren't quite oh. as shit as you were last week. Yeah, I was that I was that lad, I was that fat lad. Oh, <laughs> did a bit of running today, well done. <laughs> Man of match. Uh God, it's tough with that. Um between Phillips and Lorente for me. Um Phillips. Yep. Do you want to give reason? The no. shortest. It's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no. Now you've asked me for a reason. Lorente. No. Uh, Struke. Um, it's really difficult, actually, because I thought of the back, as I said, I thought Struke, Phillips, uh, Lorente, and Ailing. Ailing was superb today, I thought. Mm. Uh, what I liked about some of them was they put proper tackles. I know we've just talked about refereeing decisions and tackles and being a bit, you know, the game's changed, haven't it? I thought some of their players went down so easy. But we actually put up some proper smashed smashed a few of them today. Mount got it early doors from Phillips. Uh, there was a couple on the early doors I thought were brilliant. Um, Ailing did one where he just went straight through somebody and I think it was Lorente sort of cleared the ball where he smashed the ball, player, everything, great. Love a bit of that. Really tough one, but I'm going to say Phillips because I think he's, you know, he's just come back after being out and um, I thought he marshaled that midfield really well and he intercepted a lot of stuff that was looking dangerous. So Phillips, just for his reading of the game, leadership, he got that injury early on, which I think slowed him up for a bit and just kept going. Perseverance, resilience, determination. That's what we like to see in Leeds, isn't it? That's our hallmark. So I'll give it KP and I love him. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. It has to be Phillips. For me, um, even to the to the end of the game, he was um, high pressing people. He was he he went all the way up to like Rudiger, you know, almost to uh, to Mendy, and it was the 80th minute, and and like Roberts um, and uh, and Click were unable to press. That Click was already knackered after 10 minutes. I don't know what what's happened with him, um, but but KP. Tireless engine, work ethic, um, really just vintage. He absolutely bossed it. And and if that doesn't, he gave a message to Gareth Southgate, who was there today, is like, you need me in this position for England in the summer. Um, I just thought he was absolutely immense. He did everything, everything right, blocking shots, didn't lose his man all day. Yeah, um, he, he cancelled uh, Mason out, out a lot of the, a lot of the games, didn't he? Mason a, out was one well, they even play in, to be honest. He was he's a good footballer in the base of Mountain, he never got a kicker. Yeah. Uh, but like I say, I love all that early door stuff for me. I always remember you remember the was it the cup final in Wimbledon Liverpool where McManaman was supposed to be uh, McMahon, sorry, was supposed to be Liverpool's hard man and Vinnie Jones like literally a minute in just literally smashed him and he hardly saw him at man all game but it's you know I've said this before if there's children watching we should advocate these kind of um, dark arts you know on a Leeds United podcast but I love all that and I thought you know him him giving it to Mount early doors um, and sort of like I say shutting him out and being on top of him all the time it's like a bit like you know you just get sick of it don't you? even turning around and he's on top of you and he's, he's you know he's 
kicking you and he's, he's you know putting a foot in on you. The thing about Phillips is though, he, he, he gets credit for all that, but when he gets the ball in advance areas as well he always seems to make good decisions which a lot of them don't you know I, I, I thought that was the biggest criticism of the team today mm-hmm. was in that final third I think some of the decision making it just isn't quite right at the moment whereas at the start of the season it really was um, but he's yeah, we- great you know he gets the ball in the final third and he always seems to pick you know let's keep the pressure on let's get it out wide let's get I'll get it back again and then move it to the other side of the pitch rather than trying to thread a pass through 14 players you know I, I just think he's he's got the lot really, and, and he, I'd love to see him a bit more advanced, but he's just so he's so powerful in that. Um, Can we uh, just pause it a minute? I need to get some tissues because he's talking about Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> you know my you know my opinion on Phillips. That's why I didn't say man of the match for him because what he did today is what he does game in game out. There's is, there's not is a solid eight out of nine out of ten most games. And it just shows how much we miss Phillips when he's not playing. It just does. It's like he wins every second ball. He mops. He mops up everything. He knows where the where the next player is. He knows two or three passes ahead of any other player. Sometimes on the pitch, he just his his whole football intelligence is absolutely fantastic. I think I think it also shows the fact that when he's out injured, he doesn't have to have two or three games in the under twenty threes. He's straight back into the first team as well. Yeah, he's the only only player who gets that trust from Bielsa, which says something, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was good to see um, Cock uh, Cock on the bench as well before uh, under twenty threes. But I think that's mainly just because we we needed them back, and Strout came back even though he was supposed to be not fit. But I think that's yeah, it was a strange one that wasn't again. It? Cooper's got a mysterious <clears throat> injury, which usually when that happens, it's uh, COVID, isn't it? Yeah. They've got some sort of policy for not yeah. saying it if it's if it's COVID, but if it's anything else, they'll generally say what it is. Right. Um, I thought Dallas played well as well. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, it's it's just it, it runs the yeah. Sorry, yeah. Barney, go on. It's just absolutely brilliant, and he's mm. just so consistent with everything he does. He's he's very much like a strike. He does. What it's nothing out of it. It's not like wow, that's fantastic. But everything he does is just really well. Just does it really well. I think he's. I, I can't say much more about him because the, the stuff he does sometimes and the, the way he sometimes drives the team forward. He's like a. I know that it's the old cliche to say, but he's like a proper leader on the pitch that you need. Like so sometimes he gets the gets the game by the scruff of his neck, and you just like right. That's what we need to do. Crack on. Yeah, he runs the same risk as Phillips. Have you, you expect it from him now? So he mm. doesn't get the credit he deserves. Whereas you know you're giving cheap man up matches to Roberts because he didn't <laughs> you, he didn't give the ball away every time he got it on the center on the center circle. Um, I'm looking at Dallas and Phillips now and saying, look, they're the guys who probably are underappreciated because they just you kind of expect them to be that eight out of ten every week, don't you? And, and they are the producing and, and you could play Dallas in goals, he'd still get eight out of ten. Simple as it's just outstanding, isn't it? Uh, what a journey he's been on because you wouldn't have put him down for that four, five years ago, would you? And, and you wouldn't have put Phillips down for that five, six years ago either before Bielsa came. So all credit to, again to, well, to them actually, but Bielsa as well. I've just got you know. visions now. Sorry. I've got visions now of Bielsa saying in training, right, Dallas, hear me out. I want you to do some training with Mesley today for us. Yeah. It'd be like, right, crack on. Let's right. That's fine. I can't do a Northern Irish accent. He's got a Leeds accent anyway, I think. Yeah, it's from he's from, it's from uh, Cookridge, isn't it? Yeah. So you want you want me to play in goal, Mr. Bielsa, sir? <laughs> bueno, bueno. Uh, bueno, Stewie. Uh, with the Melier. In goal. No, nope, no problem, Mister Bielsa. You, you you put me in a place. I'll 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 do the best that I can. I know you, so you are. You see you. I'm gonna go to that Scottish. Let's do some really shit accents for a bit. We haven't done it for long enough. It's been a while. And then Kiko puts another message on Instagram saying Stuart Dallas has taken over for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, we, we shouldn't talk about Kiko. Let's not sully this podcast with no, talk exactly. of Kiko. God, yeah. Um, we should have a list of subjects that are banned. Kiko Casilla, Piers Morgan. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Don't sully that podcast with them those names. So, <clears throat> uh, press conferences then. Bielsa felt 
Chelsea's dominance in the first half was greater than Leeds's was in the second half. If that makes sense. If anything Bielsa says can be deciphered. Um, he felt despite playing a superior opponent, uh, the, the chances created were even. We did what was necessary to play a balanced game. It's very uh, Thanos from uh, Bielsa there. Um, Cooper says he is... Oh, he says that Cooper is ill. <laughs> and COVID! Ill. Ill. <laughs> and there is no news on Bamford's injury yet. On Rodrigo being subbed, I value a lot how he played in the 50 minutes that he did. After 40 days out, it's physically difficult to come back and find the rhythm of match fitness. Um, basically, he said R Rodrigo provided more output than he was expecting. And he was delighted with what he called a very correct performance from the defence and Phillips. The, there you go. Very correct. Very erect or very correct? I am. <laughs> I was very erect. <laughs> and watching, you. That, watching that back four today, yeah, very erect. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till Cox back in there as well. Right. Yeah. That was that was part of it, I think. No, he's bang on, isn't he? He sees things we don't. That's the point in it. I mean, mm. you know, I, I sort of watched the ebb and flow of the game and sort of pick out certain players. And I think uh, Alex was on about the other week. You know, you miss Ellen Road because your sort of shins are digging into the back of the seat in front as you will leads on. I've got I've got a leaning tendency. So if leads are kicking that way, then I'm sort of leaning on the guy next to me. And then if they're kicking, I'm sort of almost trying to will him to, to push him on. So I'm sort of emotionally attached. And you can see that Bielsa is, but he just sees things we don't, don't he? And, you know, who am I to argue? The smell of the onions and the, the sausages <laughs> for me. Smell of the cock. The, the, the hot dogs, yeah, that, that's what. Uh, um, and so just a little word on the, the pundits then. Oh, uh, well, which comment did you Yeah, it was like uh, every player that done isn't English. Oh, he's, he's probably not got into the team yet because he can't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, every single player he was saying about, I was like, for fuck's sake, just, you've played in Spain. Did, did every commentator say, oh, well, he's... He's not speaking Spanish yet, so that's why he's not getting into the game yet. I mean, just honestly, this isn't the modern game, and just it's just stuff like that. It's just that's that's not insight into the game you need. That's not the insight you need. What are the prerequisites these days? I mean, is it do you have to be a full, fully paid member of the the uh, UKIP party or <laughs> <laughs> to be a commenter? Yeah, be, I, yeah, yeah. I actually thought compared to the thing with Hinchcliffe is he gets things wrong and then he looks at a, a replay and just he just continues to go down the line that he was right. Whereas at least McMahon, I mean, a couple of times, say with that corner, for instance, Chilwell <coughs> shot that wasn't a corner. He said, oh, no, it didn't even get a touch. And there was that, I think the offside, he mentioned some of you know, that why, why have they not continued, you know, let the game continue and then gone back. So uh, I didn't mind. He did, I don't find him that offensive compared to Andy Hinchcliffe, but that's a really low benchmark. A really low bar. <laughs> yeah, a really low bar to set, yeah. Rio before the game was abusing cool Melier. Um, so it was good clean sheet for Melier in the end. So <laughs> yeah, eight saves. Fuck you, Rio. Yeah. <clears throat> another one we can another one we can uh, yeah. put put down to experience. I won't say what I said on the <laughs> I won't say what I said in the WhatsApp group. <laughs> He's on the banned list anyway. We're not gonna talk about um that ex scummer. So too cool. Uh, was complaining about how vocal Victor Orta was. Oh. <laughs> and the irony is that in the reverse fixture, they had fucking 2,000 Cockneys going, Wee! Know, every yeah. time fucking Lorente touched the ball. Yeah. I know. <clears throat> he's not, he's not going to like it when there's a full crowd in there, is he? Hold Tuchel. Oh, my God. Never mind Tuchel. Imagine, you know, fucking hell. Tuchel complaining about Orta. I mean, can you imagine what it would have been like if he was in charge instead of Lampard? Fuck's sake, we had songs about Lampard. You know, we went on and on and on about it, so much so that Lampard, you know, had to fucking... He got so frustrated. It, it, it angered him so much that he fucking pushed out a turd in our changing room. <laughs> <laughs> Killed one out on the changing room floor, the dirty bastard. It's too cool. He's got such the fucking thin skin that Victor Victor Orta's got to got right under it. He's an he's annoying Victor Orta though, isn't he? To be fair, in a good win for us. 
Oh, I love him because he's ass. Yeah. But you know, but if he won, oh, but the derby thing with that with the binoculars, man. Wow, go on, Victor. Yeah, <laughs> mm. fair, yeah fair enough. Probably, if, yeah. Probably if someone was was doing their finishing move or whatever against us, or if he was scum or something, we'd we'd absolutely hate him. We'd fucking hate him. Same with Ali Oscar. Yeah, yeah. I'm I've really grown to dislike Ali Oscar to be honest, and he still still plays for us. (laughs) (laughs) So 28 games played, 36 points gained, 10 games to go, and 10 points clear of 18. It's going well. That was a good point, wasn't it? Um, so final thoughts then. Barney? I thought it was a very professional performance today. So I think we saw some players that actually were, they grew into the game and they were quite mature in, the, in their decision-making. Um, just, I just People start panicking tonight when uh, Fulham are uh, beating Man City 2-0 and then we're back into a relegation dogfight again. But other than that, I think it was a very, very good game. Very good. Very good. Very impressed. Okay. You in? Final thoughts. Made, absolutely made up with a point. Superb point against a good side. Um, as I say, I think it was a good opportunity to actually beat him. I thought when we controlled parts of the game, we created some good chances, good enough chances to maybe just sneak one and get it. But I'm not going to be greedy after the run we've had to get a point against Chelsea. Absolutely brilliant. Um and I thought the team played really well. I thought that, you know, in games where we've had like Rafina just excelling and, you know, Bamford sort of, you know, sticking the chances away, um, you know, sort of odd players have carried us a little bit. Um, whereas I thought the whole team, you know, played really, really well today and got stuck in and uh, really fought and ground out a good point. So I made up with a point and I can enjoy it the rest of my weekend now because the last thing I wanted was to go into the weekend with a, a thrashing by... Uh, those scummers from down the old Kent Road. Yeah, it was a really good game, wasn't it? Uh, I guess that's my final thoughts. It was end to end. We raised our level to to meet the uh, the riches, the the wealth of of options that that Chelsea have in their squad, their billion pound um, squad. I thought we, you know, we we go back to it all the time for context, but we have just got promoted, and to to play that well against uh, a team like Chelsea, who under Tuchel, not under Lampard, but under Tuchel, I think can can be contenders or should be contenders for for the for the Premier League, I, I think is is um out, outstanding. A couple of years ago, if we'd have got Chelsea in the in the cup and we'd have drawn nil nil, um, you know, we'd be singing songs about it. <laughs> um so I think we've come a long way to for it just to be a result that you know has cheered us up a little bit over the weekend or to stop the rot of 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 one win in five so brilliant performance i thought a lot of uh, players got their form back i thought we look such a different outfit with uh phillips back in and up to speed um and yeah roll on fulham and sheffield united um the this game was a free hit and we've got something out of it. Um, the next two are not free hits. And and I would like to see us at the end of the next two games having cemented our spot in the Premier League for next season. And then we can stop worrying about this season and we can look ahead to the summer and uh, a new season with a new pitch. Okay, so uh, if you've enjoyed, well said, if you've enjoyed, well said, if you've enjoyed that podcast, uh, you can find us at Peacocks Roar on Twitter or uh, the Roaring Peacock on YouTube. If you're watching there, hello. Moving images are nice, aren't they? Um, so if you want to follow us on Twitter, if you're still listening, you probably enjoy what we were talking about. So why not get a little bit more? So. Um, my name is Adonis. You know me as at the Adelites on Twitter. You can follow me there. And it's a very good buy from me. And Machiavelli is Ewan at Ewan Metcalf. You can follow him there. I'll see you there. And uh, at Barney underscore 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 21. Still hasn't changed his Twitter tag to help <laughs> me out. <laughs> it's a very good buy from Barney. We hate Chelsea. We hate Chelsea.
Come on, Leeds. Come on, Leeds. Most of our stats come from LUFC stats or LUFC data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Cooper Ewan, and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon, and Rob, the Light Show, and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind.